Today's video is about f-stops and apertures. When some people get interested in photography, they like taking pictures and then they get baffled when they start looking at their camera and going, oh, what is this? There's f-stops, there's apertures, and they start asking questions like, what's the difference between an f2.8 and an f22? I'll have a demonstration here with some salt. What is an aperture? An aperture is a hole. You need a hole for the light to enter your camera. The hole is right in the center of here, and this hole can be adjusted. On this lens, this is a really old lens, we have the choices of f16, f11, f8, f5.6, f4, f2.8, and f1.8. When you're using a digital camera like this, there's so many different choices. But anyhow, what is an f-stop? An f-stop is a number that has been assigned to the aperture. What's an aperture? An aperture is a hole. So what is the difference between an f22 and an f2.8? Well, when you're thinking about these f-stop numbers, you got to think things are opposite of what you would naturally think. You would think that f22 is a big number. 22 bananas is more than 2.8 bananas, but it's opposite. So, F22 is smaller. It's a little tiny hole. F2.8, a large hole. So, just remember that everything's backwards when it comes to f-stop numbers. I also want to mention about the exposure triangle. There's three things in the exposure triangle. There's your f-stop or aperture. There's your ISO, which is the sensitivity to light of your film or your chip inside of your camera. And the third thing is the shutter speed. In this video, I'm just going to talk about the one thing. It's the aperture or the f-stop. Why would you want to change your f-stop? Sometimes you would want to use an f-stop where my face is going to be really in focus, but all these branches back here are completely out of focus. So you would need that. Sometimes you're doing a landscape and in the front there's some flowers, then there's a valley, and in the other side, way in the distance, is a mountain. You want everything in focus. You want those flowers right in the front and you want the mountains. You want everything in focus. So you'd need to select an f-stop to get that. So that's two reasons why you would want to change your f-stop. Also for sports, if you're trying to capture a lot of action, you need to find a fast f-stop. So you're going to go buy yourself a fast lens. Your f-stop setting is going to influence the depth of field. The depth of field is how much of your image is in focus. So if you have a really short depth of field, that means like just a little bit of it is in focus. But if you have a large depth of field, the whole thing's in focus. So where I'm setting right now, my face is in focus. These branches behind me are in focus. So we have a wide depth of field. So when you're setting your f-stop, if you use an f22, you'll have a lot of depth of field from beginning to end. But if you're using 2.8, you're only going to get a little bit of it in focus. So 2.8 lenses have been very popular now for the last few years. People really like that short focus, and they like to have a blown out background with the big blobs that is called bokeh or bokeh. And people love it. People love those 2.8 lenses. But the old photographers like Ansel Adams and the landscape people, they had the F64 Club where they would use the very tiny f-stop so that they could get their image in focus from beginning to end. So f64 was a big thing in those days, but now 1.8 and 2.8, that's the big thing. Anyhow, around the middle is f8. I have one of my lenses set for f2.5, that's a larger aperture, and the other one f11, which is a narrower aperture. Okay, this demonstration I'm using, instead of two lenses, two containers of salt. I'm going to take this container of salt right here. This is our uh, F11. And I'm going to be pretending I'm taking a picture. So there's my uh, aperture. It's set po for F11. And now I'm going to open the shutter and I'm going to be taking a picture. So the light is coming on to our sensor. We're taking a picture taking a picture. See how it's taking a while for our light to hit the sensor and to create the image? Uh, you know what? It looks like this is a black and white photo, doesn't it? Monochrome. All right. 
Here it comes. I'm outside, so this little bit of wind was blowing it around. All right, we're still taking the picture. Come on. Okay. When you're a photographer, you have to be patient. Okay, there it is. Okay, so we have now taken a picture using our F11. There it is. Okay, so we took one photo that was using F11. Now we're going to take another photo. This is the faster lens. So here we go. It's a 2.5. It's a fast lens. We are taking a picture. Boom. That's it. We took the photo. See how much faster that was? So that's what we call a fast lens. So the light is the salt and this board right here is our sensor or our film. So that's our demonstration. All right, thank you very much for watching my video. Come back in the future and I'll have more videos about photography.